Hello, this is Torsten from ADB, and I'm going to show you an overview of the AI landscape. AI is all about data. So it, based, it is based on data, and that's why you see here we have a database and a data lake house. The data lake house is the place where this AI technology is being applied, but the data originates in other places, for instance, in a database. So that's why it's important that we understand the relationship of both. Data is in systems of record in a database, and in order to analyze it, you put it into some specialized formats, typically in something is called a data lake house. But that's not the only place where data originates. Often data originates in real time and is directly ingested into your lake house in a streaming fashion. Okay, now let's take a look how these different disciplines of AI are related to this data. We start with descriptive AI. And descriptive AI is actually not really called AI, but it's often referred to as BI, which stands for business intelligence. And with business intelligence or BI, you're using analytic technologies. You're doing analytics. And analytics typically means you're running some queries on your data. And often you may have also heard this term OLAP, which stands for online analytic processing, which is a database workload type, a certain type of SQL queries that you're running. So you use analytics or OLAP in order to conduct descriptive AI slash BI. And what you're doing here as a solution, you're doing things, you're building things like dashboards or reports on your data. So that's what you're typically doing when we talk about descriptive AI or BI. The next level is predictive AI. And predictive AI, as the name indicates, is about you making some predictions. And you're making these predictions based on the mechanism that is called a model. A model like a machine learning or ML model. So now the question is, how do you get to this? So the first thing is, you need to train such a model. And you need data to train it. That's what the lake house is for. You train models on your data in a lake house. And then you're using this model in the second step in order to make predictions, and you make these predictions in situations when new data is arriving. This new data is not necessarily arriving here. That's actually where the other places here, real-time data and databases matter again, because the predictions are typically done when, for instance, a new transaction is happening. Like a new transaction in a database is happening, like a certain credit card transaction, then you need to use this model in order to figure out, is it maybe a fraud? So the key thing is here, you make predictions when transactions are happening, because transactions means you're doing decisions. And this can also be something that's outside of a database. Like, for instance, again, looking at real-time data, you could also say, I need to make these decisions in real-time when a certain message is arriving. So that's how predictive analytics is related here. And now let's look at the right-hand side, because this is generative AI. That's, of course, uh, the, the hot subject that many people are talking about nowadays. How is it related and also different from these things? First, let's talk about some things that are common, because also, similar to the predictive side, you have models here. But these are typically specific types of models. You may have heard this term LLM. M stands for model, and it's a large language model which means it's models that are trained on large volumes of data. More generally speaking, you may have also heard the term foundation model here. LLM is a specific type of foundation model, specifically for text data, for language data. Now, similar to the predictive side of things, there's a training phase. Right? You train this model on large volumes of language data that you have somewhere prepared. Now, the thing is, this is such a large language model that this is a very complex and expensive process. So you don't really do this typically yourself. You have commercial vendors or whole communities that are building these models and distributing them. And then when you come in and want to use it, you may want to customize it using a so-called fine tuning, where you basically already take a pre-trained model and fine tune it basically with your own private data to add additional insights into this model. So this is something which is still expensive and takes a lot of time. Now, how do you use a large language model? Well, you use a large language model, again, by, by applying it to your own private data. And this private data, again, comes from your data lake house. So you retrieve 
your data here, your retrieve data, and you apply it to the application that sends this data then to your large language model. This interaction with the large language model is typically called prompting. Right? You send it to a so-called prompt. And then you generate, this large language model generates new data as the output of this prompt. Now the key thing is there's now a very interesting twist here also with the lower layer of the database because in order to achieve exactly that, this is something that happens interactively. So interactively, you are doing this retrieval as at the time when you're using this large language model. Like for instance, you have a chatbot, but you're typing your, your, your message, hit enter, and now all of this needs to run that you can basically get interactively a generated response, which means retrieval is time critical. And that's where databases come in. Because databases are a mechanism to accelerate and allow you to this, this retrieval. So the database that we are now looking at here is now a specific type of a database that is called a vector database. The vector database is a specific capability of a database to identify similar data that is related and relevant to the prompt that you're currently running. But vector database, the database enable you to do exactly this, retrieving data that you then feed to a large language model. Because the data that you're retrieving here that you find in the, in the lake house is actually now unstructured data. And when I say unstructured, I mean things like documents or images. Right? It's a large corpuses of data that is relevant to your, your private data, your corporate data. You're retrieving this data with the help of vector data and feeding it into the large language model. Now there's one more thing how this whole thing belongs together and this is how can you cross over? Because as I said, there's unstructured data. Unstructured data is the data that is relevant that they're using for these large language models in this generative AI. And in fact, generative AI is now also the mechanism that you can use in order to cross over to say, okay, I have unstructured data but I'm using large language models in order to extract so-called features, which is a structured piece of information. Right? This discipline is called feature engineering. And with that, basically, you now can use generative AI in order to go all the nine yards to predictive and descriptive analytics as well. So the key thing that needs to be understood is that while there are different disciplines, descriptive AI, predictive, generative AI, it all comes together on the database layer. So when I talk about real-time data sources, I mean data that is originating in real time. So these are messages that are coming in all the time. This is a continuous flow of data. This can be, for instance, things like uh, Slack messages, right? When you're continuously interacting with others, you are sending interactive Slack messages. This is actually data that comes in all the time. Each Slack message can be a real-time data event that we want to capture here. Or this can be logs, right? You have an application or something running that is continuously logging each operation that is happening. Each log line is a real-time data message. This can be user behavior, right? If you have user interactions with your web application, each click that the user does, a so-called click stream, in this stream, each click is a real-time message here. Generally speaking, you can look at real-time data as telemetry data, telemetry data about IT, like log messages, about people, like click streams, or about the real world. This is IoT messages that are coming in from your devices. Thank you very much. This has been our overview for the AI landscape.